May I have your attention, please? Having been notified, we do have 40 registered voters. I hereby call the meeting to special town meeting to order. Let's leave. This is a special town meeting for the town of Millville, May 11th, 2015. Time now is uh, 6.35. Will everybody rise and face the flag, please, while we have the pleasure of witnesses. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Let us have a moment of silence for our first responders who were there for us during difficult situations and who lay down their lives every day of the year. May we also have in our thoughts our military personnel, both men and women who are serving worldwide and here in the States and doing the same to keep us free. Thank you. Be busy. Is there anyone in the present who has not ever been to a special or annual town meeting here? I see no hands, so everybody should be well aware of the rules and how town meeting functions, so therefore I'm not going to go into a lengthy discussion. One of the things I do want to say, though, is I am looking for two individuals. I have been notified that one of our present members of the Finance Committee will not be seeking reappointment, and that lady, Ms. Kelly Capazzoli, I want to thank her for her tireless effort that she, during the time she spent on this finance committee, it's not an easy job. And it's, a, at certain times of the year, a very uh, strong commitment. So I am looking for someone to replace her. If you're interested, please see me or notify the executive secretary and she can pass the information on to me. Also, I have been notified that Ms. Mary Ryan would like to step down. I don't want to lose her, but I can understand where she's coming from. Mary has served on the Finance Committee for better than 40 years. It's Mary about the finances of this town. She has been a guiding light to all our members on the finance committee and myself, the board of selectmen, the town accountant, and everyone involved in the running of, of your town. We, she will surely, surely be missed. I don't want to lose her, but I understand where she's coming from. So if anyone wants to step up and try to fill those shoes, please feel free to notify me or the executive secretary. Okay, thank you, Mary. All right, let's get down to it. We're gonna go start off with a special town meeting. We only have three articles, so we should get to it fairly quickly. I will read the article. The people who make the motion all they will say will be moved in the words of the article. All of you should have in front of you a packet, a red packet that you picked up in the back with all the material available to you. So if you'll take out the special town meeting uh, warrant, we will begin. Article one. Snow and ice deficit. To see if the town will vote to transfer from any available funds a sum of money to fund highway department, snow and ice removal. Account number 0001-423-5240-00 to supplement the physical year 2015 town budget approved under Article 9 at the annual town meeting warrant dated tw May 12, 2014 
or take any other action thereto in relation thereto. Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Who second it? Richard. That was Rich, uh, Richard on the finance committee who seconded it, Mary. Uh, Marsha, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Helen's laughing at me because I, I called her something else earlier earlier, earlier tonight. <laughs> the motion, uh, the article has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Recommendation from the Finance Committee? The Finance Committee recommends the article as written is a transfer of $32,866.11 from account 0044 Zero 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 five seven eight nine zero one and five thousand four hundred and forty eight dollars from account zero zero four four zero 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 five seven eight nine zero zero and one thousand one hundred and forty four thousand one hundred and twenty two dollars and forty one cents from free cash to fund the deficit of one hundred and eighty two thousand $437.52 in FY15 Snow and Ice budget. That first figure was $32,866.11, is that correct? Correct. The second figure was $5,546. 5448 Four, 48 Correct. Okay. And the third figure was $144,000. One hundred twenty-three dollars and forty-one cents. Correct. Okay. Select with recommendation. Recommended. Okay. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. It is a vote. I so declare. Article two. Fiscal year 2015, budget adjustment, education, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from any available funds the sum of $15,100 to fund the education line item entitled Tri-County Tuition, account number 0001-300-5700. Within the fiscal year 2015 town budget under Article 9 of the annual town meeting warrant on May 12, 2014, or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the Finance Committee, your recommendation. Finance Committee recommends the articles as written transfer $15,100 for free cash to supplement the education tri-county tuition line item. Mr. Chairman, the board select your recommendation from the board. Okay. Who seconded it? John? Okay. John Laura seconded it, Marsha. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. In a discussion? <laughs> Seeing none? Everyone in favor, say aye. Aye. Those in favor, say nay. The ayes have it. It is a vote, and I so declare. Article three, prior year unpaid bills. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from any available sums, funds, a sum of money for the payment of unpaid bills of previous fiscal years. Pursuant to Mass General Law, chapter 44, section 64, or take any other action relative thereto. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the 
Just the moderator before us, we'll have to recommend our decree as written. Is there a second? John Laura? Second? Mr. Chairman, Finance Committee, your recommendation to the Finance Committee. Having no knowledge of any prior unpaid bills, Finance Committee recommends striking the item. Amendment to the motion has been made to strike the article. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mr. Wing, Wing seconded. Any discussion about striking the article since there are no unpaid bills? Seeing none, everyone in favor say aye. Aye. Everyone, everyone say nay. The, aye, the ayes have it. It is a vote, and I so did there. Miss Wing. She's been waiting for that. <laughs> Mrs. Wing has made a motion to dissolve the warrant for special town meeting. Is there a second? John Laura. Motion's made, been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The article has been dissolved. Special town meeting has a move to adjourn special town meeting. Not adjourn, but yep. You want to make a motion? Second. Roland, <laughs> Roland Barry seconded that. Motion been made seconded to adjourn the special town meeting. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. It is a vote. We will be in a recess, so to speak, now uh, until 7 o'clock at the time of our annual town meeting. So if you need to go out and get a drink of water or take care of something, now is the time to do it. We will be please. May I have your attention, please? May I have a count, an official count from the back, please, of how many uh, registered voters we now have present? 71. 71? Correct. Thank you. being 7 o'clock, I do call the annual town meeting for May the 11th, 2015 to order. I'm going to go over things a little bit as we go through the articles. Uh, if you want to speak to an article once discussion is open, I would ask if you want to uh, opponent of, and an opponent of the article or you want to oppose an article and you want to speak on it you come down and you get line behind this microphone okay if you want to speak a second time you have to get to the end of the line we're going to go through it that way does everybody understand so as soon as we open up for discussion if you want to have any anything to say about it come down to this microphone and line up okay we're going to try and go through this as quickly as we can. Right now, I'd like to introduce uh, or recognize uh, Alan M. Himmelberger, who is a superintendent of schools, Blackstone Valley uh, Regional School District, uh, Blackstone Millville Regional School District. Dr. Fitzpatrick, who is our superintendent for the Blackstone Valley uh, Vocational Technical High School. And Dr. Fitzpatrick, I'm going to ask you to move from there down to here on the front row. That way we don't confuse you with Jerry Finn's brother or something like that. I think you're a resident, okay? Also, I'd like to introduce Marilyn Matthew, 
who is our town accountant and has been so for many, many years and kept us out of the uh, financial ruin and protected our funds. Uh, Gary Brackett is here. He's our town council. He's there somewhere. Uh, I think he went over. There he comes. So he'll be speaking on anything, uh, in, anything legal, all right? If we broach a subject for it concerns the Blackstone Millville Regional School District. I will allow the superintendent of schools to speak since he is our superintendent. The same applies to Dr. Fitzpatrick since he is the superintendent of the Blackstone Valley Technical Vocational High School. Okay? And Melanie Matthew, if she needs to speak about some matters of financial. Okay? Any questions? Okay, folks. Get your sneakers on. Let's go. I hope to get out of here in a reasonable time. If we reach 10 o'clock, I'm gonna ask the audience, depending on where we are in the warrant, whether we stay or whether we adjourn until tomorrow night at seven o'clock, okay? Article one, monetary increases. To see if the town will vote to authorize that any motion or amendment to increase any monetary articles or line items as recommended by the finance committee presented at this town meeting shall be out of order unless such motion or amendment states the source of funding as being from available free cash or the line item article or other funding source that will be reduced by the same amount or take any other action in relation thereto. Mr. Chairman. Move the article. Move the article. And second. Second. Ms. Wing seconded. Ms. Wing. Everybody understand this article? In a discussion. If you make an amendment to any other financial article to transfer any money from somewhere, you better be able to tell us exactly where you're going to get it from, from what line item you're going to get it from, and where it's going to go. Okay, or are you going to be out of order? Understood. Seeing no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. It is a vote. I so declare. Article 2. Authorized loans. To see if the town will vote to authorize the town treasurer with the approval of the Board of Selectmen to borrow money in anticipation of revenues of the fiscal year beginning July the 1st, 2015 in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 4, and to issue a note or notes therefore, payment within one year, and to renew any notes as may be given for a period of less than one year in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 17, or take any other action in relation thereto. Mr. Rowland. Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selectmen recommends this article as written. Second. Second. Ms. Wayne. <coughs> Finance Committee recommendation? Finance Committee recommends the article as written. Any discussion? I see none. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, it is a vote, and I so declare. Article 3, Highway Department, Chapter 90. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, to borrow, or to transfer from any available funds, or any combination thereof, a sum of money for the Highway Department to be used for engineering, construction, reconstruction, and or repair to town roads and bridges, with said funds to be reimbursed by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts under Mass General Law Chapter 90 or take any action in relation thereto. Chairman. Mr. Monterey, Board of Select recommends the article is written. Sure, second. John Laura. Mr. Chairman, Finance Committee, your recommendation. Finance Committee recommends the article is written. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, here's the vote. I so declare. <coughs> Article 4, revolving funds. To see if the town will vote to create and or continue <coughs> authorizing revolving funds for certain town departments pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half for the fiscal year beginning July the 1st, 2015, as follows. Cable access, spending authority, cable access committee, revenue source, charter communication fees, program cross related to operating local cable channels, expenditure limit $15,000, police department, chief of police, firearm fees, cost related to Fund expenses incurred, $1,000. Inspectual, fee, inspectual fees, electrical and plumbing inspectors, inspection fees. Salaries above base salary for inspectors, $5,000. Animal control, animal control officer, licensing fees and violations. Salaries above base salary for officers, $5,000. Senior center, council on aging, facility rental in income. Senior Center Repairs or Maintenance, $5,000. Senior Center, Council on the Aging, Van Ridership Fee Donations, Van Related Maintenance and Expenses, $5,000. Parks and Recreation Commission, Commission, Parks and Recreation Commission, Ball Field User Fees, Maintenance and Improvements to Ball Fields or Playgrounds, $5,000. <coughs> Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selectmen recommends Article 4 as well. Is there a second? Second. Mrs. Wing. Finance Committee's recommendation. Finance Committee recommends the articles written. Discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. It is a vote I so declare. <coughs> Article 5, cable licensing fees. To see if the town will vote to appropriate the lesser amount of either 15, 50% of any fees collected in the cable license fund and as returned from the cable license holder to the town are $7,500 and forward said funds to the superintendent of schools of the Blackstone Millville Regional School District for use by the director of library and media services to enhance the curriculum offering, offerings that are available in the school district and further to authorize the cable access committee to forward said funds on or before June 1st, 2016 or take any other action in relation thereto. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Moderator, will the selectmen recommend Article 5? There's a second. Second. John, is that you or Joe? Joe, Joe proposal. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, Finance Committee, your recommendation, please. Finance Committee recommends the article is written. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, it is a vote, and I so declare. Article 6, fund capital budget. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from any available funds a sum of money to fund the fiscal year 2016 proposed capital budget or take any other action re relative thereto. Submitted by the Capital Programs Committee. Caballero, do you want to make a motion? Sure, I make a motion that we accept our class right Article 6. Is there a second? Second. Brooks. Mr. Chairman, recommendation of the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selectmen recommends Article 6 as written. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. 
Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, it is a vote, and I so declare. Article 7, reallocation of MSBA funds, new capital line item. To see if the town will vote to reallocate the amount of $100,000 from the final reimbursement payment received from the construction grant awarded to the Blackstone Millville Regional School District for the construction and equipping of the Millville Elementary School currently allocated in MES water account number 0301-000-5309-42 to fund a new capital line item entitled MES Fire Tank or to take any action relative thereto. Capital Planning Committee. Capital Planning Committee. Uh, uh, Chairman Hall, Council Member Article 7 is written. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Brooks, second to you. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, it is a vote, and I so declare. Article 8, Stabilization Fund. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from any available funds a sum of money to be placed in the previously created stabilization fund under Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 5B, or take any other action in relation thereto. Mr. Chairman, Finance Committee. Uh, Mr. Water, the Finance Committee recommends the article as written and to transfer $13,000. $554.09 from free cash. What's that, what's that figure again? $13,554.09. Is there a second? Second. Kelly seconded? Brooks? Recommendation from the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selectmen recommends Article 8 as written. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Name and address, please. Yes, sir. Jane Reggio, 7 Diana Circle, Milda. I would like to move to amend Article 8, Stabilization Fund, to move the $13,554.09 as recommended by the Finance Committee from free cash to the Blackstone Millville Regional uh, Assessment. There's a second. Second. Who seconded it? Steve I know there's going to be some explanation, some uh, discussion on this. Just one moment, please.
Chairman of the Finance Committee, Richard. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. Um, I think we recognize the need of the, of the Blackstone Mill Hill School District. What um, the additional contribution? Um, this year in total, I, we believe we're giving them an increase of $278,373, which includes an additional contribution of $115,000. Uh, our reasoning behind putting additional funds into the stabilization account is really twofold. Uh, first is, um, state guidelines is that um, is, it's recommended to have at least 10% of the previous year's levy um, in that account. And right now, we're approximately 6.77, so we're under that. And that's going to play an important role because I think you all know our town hall needs uh, quite a bit of work on the capital side. And we're going to be here at the next town meeting probably arguing what we need to do to, to uh, repair that building. And so adding additional funds to our stabilization is going to improve our, our, our borrowing ability, our ability to uh, do that job that needs to get done. So we were trying um, pretty hard to put as much money as we possibly could into stabilization. We added it $50,000 going into our last meeting uh, with the FinCar, uh, which was also our public hearing. Uh, late breaking news from uh, Norfolk Aggie was that we had additional students uh, that were accepted and committed to go there. That cut into that additional 50,000 we were going to put into stabilization. The number you see, that 13,000, is the difference between us. So that's where that amount came from, and that's why we were hoping to put that money into stabilization. Who, who else wants to talk? Brooke, did you want to say something? Anybody else want to address this subject matter?
Back to the original article. You take $13,554.09 and place it into the stabilization fund. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The, nine, the ayes have it. The yeas have vote. I so declare. Article 9, fifth year budget. Thank you. What we're going to do right now, before we go into the physical year 2016 budget, is the Finance Committee would like to give you a presentation. So where I'm going to step away and move this podium over to the side, open up the curtain, pull down the screen, and they're going to give you a PowerPoint presentation. Go. And then from there, as we developed the budget, we met with them. 
um, to get an idea of if we're on the right track, if they, if they had any input, and we moved on to develop our, our finished one. We also met with the, um, with the various department heads uh, throughout this period. They scheduled time, they came in, they def uh, defended their budget, um, we made adjustments, uh, some up, some down. We also met with the, with the school committee, uh, the Blacksville Local Regional School District. Uh, they, they came into our meeting three times. Uh, and they were very constructive meetings. I went to their meeting at least once, and I sat in on a meeting they had with the Board of Select once. They, I believe, are going in the direction that needs to be, uh, they need to be going. They're bringing stability, uh, and they're gonna bring us a plan the next uh, go around. So I think we're, we're getting it uh, with the school committee, but also with all the other departments. And, I, and, uh, and I'm seeing, we're seeing a lot of progress, and we're very pleased with that. From there, we had a public hearing. In the public hearing, we had the final budget, and that took us to the meeting tonight. Our assumptions, our assumptions are, as they have been for several years, that revenue is flat. Um, we continue to rely on free cash and such as local ways. Ambulance receipts and uh, to balance our budget. And you'll see later on that what we have to take to balance our operating budget. Chapter uh, 70 funding, um, we think it's going to remain stable. We've been following that quite a bit. Uh, I see Representative Kuros here. Uh, it's important to keep our towns in mind when you build a budget. Mind. We're getting to a teetering point, a tipping point, in our ability to fund not only the Blackstone Middle Regional School District, but Tri-County, where we have students there, uh, Norfolk Aggie, and BVT on that. Uh, our revenues cannot keep up with all the, uh, the needs of the towns, including the education. And we're getting to a point, at some point, uh, there's going to be, I hate to use this because there's going to have to be an attempt for an, uh, an override to be able to fund the budgets in the manner that conceivably they need to be funded in the future. And we need that state help more than anything else. Anything we can do to help us would be uh, appreciated. Chapter 90 money, I think it's going to remain stable. You'll see later on that we've got uh, quite a bit on that. Cherry sheet funds, I'm not sure where they're heading. Well, the state's got some budget goals that they're trying to balance their budget. There's some nine seat cuts. Uh, labor negotiations, uh, that's, that's an area where um, we have a concern not because of a person getting paid for the quality of work that they're doing, but our inability to be a part of the process and just be the bill payer afterwards and not having um, sufficient funds to live up to the agreements that were made. And so that, that becomes a problem uh, when building a budget. Some of our priorities, we wanted to maintain uh, at least uh, current levels of our services. We wanted to start bringing back the level of services provided to the residents prior to the recession. We've had some success in that. We've had success in the library where the um, certification is back. We had success at the uh, senior center where they were able to operate and function um, independently. And we're starting to look again at the town hall to bring that up to the level of services we had before we made uh, significant cutbacks in the hours of operation, uh, the number of hours the people who work there actually work. We really don't have anybody who works in the town hall that is a full-time equivalent. They're half time equivalents, if not less. And that's one of the areas where we'll see that in the future. We're looking at modest capital investment. Uh, we want to fund the uh, Blackstone Noble Regional School District at levels that we can afford comfortably. And we 
we really want to grow the stabilization fund for what I mentioned earlier because of our future needs in the, in the capital. Area. And looking at a budget, you know, I, I wondered where all the money came from. And there isn't any, in the town of Millville, there's not many sources of funds. If you look at local receipts, those are excise taxes for cars, uh, boats, or what have you, uh, permits, late fees, uh, anything like that. And it, it, it's not a whole lot of money. And our state receipts aren't that high either, 463000 Our levy for FY16 is where the brunt of our funding comes from for our budget, $4.3 million. Here are a couple of debt exclusions in there. Uh, and there's also some Title V receipts that we use to uh, uh, fund the Title V uh, program, uh, the loan program. So our total revenue was $5.4 million. And before we can say this is what we've got to work to, there are some numbers that we've got to subtract from that. One is the overlay. That's the SS's overlay, overlay correct? Marilyn? And what that is is the, uh, the assessors, when they give uh, an abatement, tax abatement, the money has to come from somebody, somewhere. So it comes off the top of our revenues. Tax title, cherry seed charges, uh, those, is, those are miscellaneous charges that the state charges the town for services. Uh, one in particular is the mosquito uh, spraying, right off the bat on that, that you, that you see um, on the cable news, if you want your yard spray, they'll come in and do it. But there is a charge to that, the town pays for that. Uh, so those reductions ended up at 106000 so our projected revenue, our total projected revenue is $5,367,437. And that's an increase of $274,994. Now there's some other income around that we also look at. We got a FEMA reimbursement for uh, storm damage. And we use that to pay, partially pay the snow and ice deficit. Free cash. 416000 we had. <coughs> and free cash, it's a tough term. Free cash is the money left over in your budget um, at the end of the previous fiscal year, plus any additional fees and permit costs that, uh, that came in that was above projections. Did I say that correctly, Marilyn? No. We also had some release of capital funds for $4,000. Uh, capital projects that were voted on uh, in previous town meetings, when the projects were done, if there was money left mm -hmm. over, it went back into the uh, general fund, and ambulance receipts. That we Our stabilization account, uh, that was mentioned before. There's some major increases this year. Uh, Worcester County retirement, we $52,000. Uh, education account. Town Hall was for an, an additional clerk to support the, um, the, uh, the building services department. It was been out without a clerk for many, many years. And we're hoping that will uh, improve the services there. The communications department was due to uh, a new, a new uh, IT contract. So we ended up with increases of about $580,000 against an increase of revenue of 274000 So right off the bat, we're in the hole. <coughs> and, excuse me, I've been sick of here for the past few days. But. School budget is our largest share of our budget, but it's probably one of our most important. Uh, The school budget is, the school ed education budget itself, the one that I'm really the most concerned about is the Norfolk Avenue, where the, the cost per student is $21,000 out of, out of county cost. And the number of students that are <coughs> planning on attending there continues to rise. This year it's at $126,000. Uh, it's an increase uh, of 
people have to be aware of that. One thing further I do want to say, I do not know the exact time frames, but the chapter money, chapter 90 money is expired at a certain point in time. So there's the potential that the, you know, soon that the 13 monies go away and you never get to get your hands on them. So your, so your property values deteriorate, your roadways continue to not be great. And it, so basically, uh, we need to take some kind of an action as a tax. Okay, and the original budget that was presented to us was five million nine hundred nineteen thousand dollars four hundred two. That was a deficit of over a half a million dollars. Uh, we reviewed it, we cut it back, we ended up with a deficit of two hundred sixty-six thousand uh, dollars forty-eight, uh, and that is budget we recommended to balance it. We used $243,717.50 for free cash and another $22,330 from the assessor's overlay that was released back to the, um, the general fund that wasn't needed anymore for uh, an out here. Okay, just want to briefly go over the capital budget in uh, the future. Uh, we are in set as a capital uh, capital committee, uh, monies aside for police car for fiscal year 17, uh, $18,000. For 19, another another $10,000. For new ambulance for fiscal year 19, $20,000. For the senior so center, a new stove, commercial grade stove, which is needed at $10,500. A new refrigerator for fiscal year 17, $4,500. That's a partial payment. We're basically banking money for a couple of years so that when the time comes for a refrigerator, there's money sitting there. Uh, the town hall, uh, $15,000 for a new server, which is, which is needed. And then uh, the middle elementary school will replace the water tank, uh, fire protection, uh, partial payment. We don't know what year that's going to be. That's why it's a question mark. And, um, and then you have to note that a lot of these are down payments for the future. So this is something that a lot of towns do do. Our town has been able to do for a lot of years, and we've now decided that we're going to earmark some money for the future so that we're not a surprise when we need a new ambulance in, in three years and four years. In areas concerned going forward, we've talked quite a bit about education, the highway department, uh, the town clerk's office. Um, every year I've been up here, uh, part of this, the, there's a debate whether the town clerk's position is a full-time position or is it a stipend position and where is it going in the future and it came up again this year and I, I don't think we can resolve that as a finance committee uh, I really think some sort of study needs to be done as to, to get a resolution on that and the big issue that's going to be coming up on the town is the addition of the town hall and what we're going to do about that We do have some recommendations. And recommendations uh, take into account everybody signing with the board of selectmen to develop a strategic plan. Uh, and they've started that. They've got uh, some, they've started the basic pieces on that. We know they're going to work on it. Uh, talking with Alan on his plan, that's great because once we understand what that is, we know where you need, where you want, then we can start funding it. The planning board to complete their master plan. I would have to develop uh, a road plan, which we'd be glad to help them with. And the Capital Planning Committee is, is on their way to developing a full-fledged five-year plan. And the, and the Finance Committee needs to do the same, our committee, to develop a funding plan to identify the, uh, the tasks and the objectives in all those plans that accomplish the goals of those things. The tasks and the objective are those things we need to fund to make those plans uh, see to uh, fruition. And, and that could be uh, short-term borrowing. Uh, we're working with a bond for the town. Uh, it's a whole number of things. So if someone comes to us and say, I need an ambulance, 
we that we'll have a five-year plan that we're going to borrow in a certain year and it's going to mature in a certain year. Uh, so there's there's a lot of things to think about. So if you actually have a, a a strong plan for the future capital plan, you can you can actually look at it and try to make a, make a make an educated decision as to what's the best one. We thank you for uh, hearing this. I know it was a bit long, uh, but for a small town, this quite is going on here. We uh, uh, think the the residents need to uh, know and understand. committee for the tremendous amount of work that they have done and also the board of selectmen our town accountant and this is the first time since i've been here that i think a presentation of this caliber has ever been presented to the town it's also the first time that i have ever sat here and listened to my town officials talk about looking down the road five years and planning five years in advance. All we have to do now is get behind them, push them along, and help them. Again, I'd like to give them all due credit. into Article 9. But first, let me read the article, get it started. Oh, and Brooks on my way out. Uh, he corrected uh, my pronunciation of physical uh, budget. My wife does it all the time. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I'm from the South. You're just going to have to live with it. <laughs> okay? You know what I'm talking about, though, don't you? All right. Physical year 2016 budget. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, to borrow, or to transfer from available funds such sums of money as may be deemed necessary to defray town expenses for all departments, including debt and interest and compensation for town officers, and to provide for the reserve fund for the fiscal year beginning July the 1st, 2015 and ending June the 30th, 2016, or take any other action in relation thereto. Mr. Chairman of the Finance Committee. Mr. Moderator, the Finance Committee recommends the article as written and to transfer $22,330.50 from available release to Cessna's overlay and $243,717.50 from free cash to fund the deficit in the FY16 budget. Give me those figures again, please, Mr. Chairman. Those figures again, please. Twenty-two thousand what? Twenty-two thousand three hundred thirty dollars and fifty cents from assessors overlay and two hundred and forty-three thousand seven hundred and seventeen dollars and fifty cents from free cash. Okay. Is there a second? Yeah. 
Mary Ryan Sacred. All right. What we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is this. You have the proposed FY16 budget in your hand. Your sweaty little hands. Before I go on, Representative Curious, thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, do you have something you'd like to say? I could give a brief update on the state budget, but there's no need to. How about we, if we get through the budget, I'll give you an opportunity to speak with. There's no objections from there. Okay? Thank you for being with us tonight, though. All right. What I'm going to do is call off the, uh, the different sections of the budget. If you wish to hold that item, holler out, hold, and give me your name, such as moderator's salary or moderator's expenses, uh, selectman's salaries or uh, selectman's expenses, uh, secretary stuff this nature each section if you want to hold an item because you want to discuss it holler out which one you want to hold give me your name and what we're going to do is we're going to go through there and we're going to vote on all the ones that, that are not helped if there's not a hold on the item we're going to vote on them get them out of the way then we'll go back and get the ones that are helped okay <coughs> Anybody want to hold moderator's expenses? Anybody want to hold selectman's expenses? Anybody want to hold executive secretary department? Anybody want to hold total finance committee expenses? Anybody want to hold town account expenses or department? Total assessor's expenses. Treasure collector department. Systems administration department expenses. Did I miss, did I miss town council? Yeah. Oh, town council. Systems administration expenses. Town clerk department or expenses. Total elections and registration. Census salaries or expenses. Conservation department. Planning board expenses. Zoning board expenses. Town hall expenses. Town reports. Insurance accounts. Worcester County retirement. Police Department, Fire Department, Building Inspector Department, Gas and Plumbing Inspector, Electrical Inspector, Civil Defense Department. Animal Control Department. 
pre-war department, communications department, total gasoline expenses, total education expenses, highway surveyor department or salary, or total highway, total highway maintenance expenses, total snow and ice removal expense, highway street lighting, Highway street sweeping. Total storm water. Total board of health. Visiting nurse services. Total human services. Total senior center expenses. Total Veterans Department. Total Library Expenses. Total Parks and Recreation. Total uh, Veterans Memorial Park. Total Historical Commission. Total Memorial Day Parade. Total Centennial Celebration. Total Cultural Council. Total Flag Warden. Total Debt and Interest. Hang on one moment, folks. $33,485. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. It is a vote and I so declare. First time. First time, I believe. And this is our 99th year, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Next year will be our 100th year as incorporation, so this is our 99th annual town meeting. I'm going out on a limb. I want to see that in the newspaper somewhere tomorrow. All right, Article 10. Yes. Does anyone object to Representative Pierce saying a couple of words? Any objections? Raise your hand. There being none. Representative Pierce, you want to step over to that mic and 
say a few words? Obje uh, the uh, object word is a few. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, not too many more people to leave, but I just want to have a forum, so uh, we'll try to be very brief. Uh, I did want to provide just a very uh, quick update on the state budget, uh, where we stand. Uh, the House, we passed our budget uh, about a week and a half ago. Uh, we approved a $38.05 billion budget. Uh, to put that in perspective for you, uh, that's less than a 3% increase uh, over last year's budget. So, so we are trying to uh, practice uh, the same fiscal conservatism that uh, European Com is recommending here um, at the state level. That, that's a little bit of a departure over the, over the past several years. Uh, but I'm pleased to say that you know, we've only uh, increased the budget by, by less than 3%. Uh, we did so, uh, we funded the budget with no new taxes, no new fees, and for the first time in eight years, uh, we've not touched the state's rainy day fund as part of the budget process. Our rainy day fund sits at over a billion dollars, so, so we're very uh, financially sound right now at the state level. Uh, closer to home, uh, Chapter 70 funding, uh, the governor in his budget uh, pro had proposed an increase. And, and here's the challenge that town meeting always has, is our budget uh, proposals are just that right now, as, as we sit here. Uh, what the state is going to give the town are just proposals. And until we get through the, the consolidated budget, uh, you're really uh, throwing darts at a dartboard that you don't know exactly what the money is uh, that you're going to get from the state. And that's just the timing issue that we'll always have to deal with uh, relative to when town meeting happens and when the budget is done. But the, the governor had proposed uh, a $20 per student increase in Chapter 70 for school funding. Uh, the House bumped that up uh, marginally to $25. Uh, per, per student, which again, if you multiply by the number of students, it, it becomes real money. Uh, the, the Senate will be taking up their budget next week. So now is the time to call your senator and say, listen, if there's an opportunity to, to argue in, in behalf of additional school funding, that, now is the chance to do that. Uh, revenue numbers have come in uh, since we did our budget. That's always the benefit that the Senate has when they do their budget is they have another month's worth of revenue numbers, including the big month of April. Uh, numbers came in, and we are tracking at, at, at the state level, about, I believe about $150 million ahead of, of plan. So, so there should be some flexibility relative uh, to the Senate budget. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about Chapter 90 funding, and if you saw the bar chart that was presented, uh, it started at roughly 50 grand a year, went up to 100 grand a year, went up to 150 grand a year, and now it's back down to 100 grand. Uh, that, uh, that bump last year, uh, the legislature had traditionally uh, budgeted $100 million for Chapter 90 funding across the state. We bumped that up to $200 million, and then uh, in FY15, we had funded it at $300 million. Uh, Governor Patrick had, had not released all of that money. It only released $200 million. So, so the first uh, numbers that hit your books here in town was only $200 million, your share of $200 million. Uh, Governor Baker, since that money was authorized but never dispersed, uh, as soon as he took office, he released that additional $100 million, which is why you saw that bump uh, in that one year. So it essentially means about another $50,000 for your town. All you, all you have to do is spend it and, and uh, ask for reimbursement on it. Uh, this year, that, that Chapter 90 funding is back to the um, pre 9 c cap level of $200 million. That's, that's one of the things. When does it expire? Those questions? I'm not sure. You raised that question. I'll check on that for you. I'm not sure how many years you have. I've spent it, but uh, I suspect it's more than, than two or three, so I, I think you're okay. Well, the, the, your numbers go back to 2013, I believe, is what you showed, so I, I think you're okay, but I, I'll, I'll confirm that. Um, and uh, the last two items, I think, that directly affect you, at least in our proposed budget, which again has to you know, go through the Senate, be reconciled, and then signed into law by the governor, uh, is we have put in for a 10% increase in regional school transportation which directly will impact your, your, uh, your school district. And the last thing uh, is that the state, that I at least it's the first time since I've been in the legislature, this is my, this is my fifth budget, um, the state is funding 100% of our share of special education, okay, which will help as well. So uh, we're getting there. Uh, we're not out of, the, uh, you know, out of the storm yet, but the revenue numbers are improving, and I'm cautiously optimistic moving forward. So. So they have to answer any questions, but I'll have to let you get on with the meeting as well. Anyone have a question?
Thank you very much. Thank you. I also would like to take this opportunity to thank Representative Kirsch for being here. I think of all of you sitting here, think back. How many times has our state rep been at our town meeting and explained things? I think this is what, the second time? And it's been him both times? Okay. Point taken, I hope. I'm not saying vote for him. <laughs> I'm just saying he's done a good job so far. <laughs> okay. Article 10, town officers. To see if the town will vote to authorize the board of selectmen to appoint the necessary town officers whose elections are not provided for or take any other action in relation thereto. Chairman. Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selection recognizes the article of uh, the as written. Is there a second? John Laura, seconded. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, it is a vote, and I so declare. Article 11, street lights, to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to install, remove, or change street lights if necessary for the fiscal year 2016 or take any other action in relation thereto. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selectmen recommends Article 11 as written. There's second. Yes, Joe Reposo. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. It is a vote, I so declare. <coughs> Article uh, 12, personnel bylaw amendments. Classification and compensation plan. To see if the town will vote to amend the town to see if the town will vote to amend the town bylaws chapter 20, personal bylaw section 20-8, compensation system, paragraph D, coverage to add and assign the position of town hall secretary as a grade two, secretary one job classification or take any other action in relation thereto. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selectmen recommends article 12 and written. Is there a second? Joe Reposo. In a discussion, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, it is a vote, and I so declare. Article 13, personnel bylaw amendments. Uh, minimum wage to see if the town will vote to amend the town bylaws chapter 20 personnel bylaws section 20-8 compensation system paragraph B coverage to amend effective July the 1st 2015 by increasing the minimum pay for a grade one position from $8.50 an hour to $9 an hour and further effective January the 1st 2016 increase the minimum pay for grade one position from $9 an hour to $10 an hour, or take any other action in relation thereto. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selectmen recommends Article 13 as written. Is there a second? Second. Is that John? Sure. Joe? Mm -hmm. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, it is a vote, and I so declare. Article 14, hunting bylaw. To see if the town will vote to amend the town bylaws by adding thereto a new chapter 36, hunting, as following. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna ask Sergeant Koopa Koop, to come down uh, from our police department. He's gonna explain this hunting uh, bylaw to you. You have it in your little hot hands. So I'm not going to read the whole thing.
the uh, hunting bylaw is a bylaw that the chief's looking to enact to protect uh, the people that are going to visit the town and walk along this uh, greenway path. Uh, it's designed to just uh, prohibit the firing of uh, firearms in that area. And it's, uh, that's that's about that on that. Um, I'm sorry, but uh, this is the first time I've had to do this. Should I be reading this little Bible? No, so, that's quite all right. Okay. <laughs> you just want to, in general terms, explain what it is and why it is. Okay. The reason we're looking to do this, the Department of Conservation and Recreation, they estimate that there's going to be 100,000 visitors to this uh, bike way that's traveling between Rhode Island up to Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, it's going to travel through some parts of Novo that are going to be next to houses, but some that are not. With these 100,000 people that are going to visit here, there are no laws currently in effect that <coughs> prohibit the use of firing of firearms uh, around the Greenway Path. So there are only two laws in effect right now that prohibit firing uh, firearms in any situation, one within 500 feet of a house and the other within 150 feet of, of, a, of a roadway. We feel that uh, the state is taking measures to <coughs> pass laws in the future from what we're told to protect this greenway, which is new to even the state of Massachusetts. We're just hoping that the town will pass this bylaw to be proactive in the protection of these many visitors. We do believe there's going to be a good amount of visitors based on the fact this is a departure and arrival zone. There's going to be a large parking lot, the Noble Lock, that uh, have people stop there and start off or, or uh, arrive to. And that's the rationale for uh, trying to pass this bylaw. Thank you, sir. Chairman, I want to ask you to make a motion for the bylaw. Okay. Where's the other one? The Board of Selectmen uh, recommends Article 14 as read. Your second. John? John Laura. I think you're very. Does anybody not understand what this bylaw is and what it's going to do and where it is in effect at? The bicycle path, the pedestrian path is going to go through town. Okay? No discussion. Yes, ma'am. Valerie Haggerty, 46 B Lake Street, Melville. I had a question. What is the impact on the existing hunting areas in Melville in general and specifically duck hunting? Uh, sir, can you uh, can you address that? What are the hunting laws in, in Belleville right now? What are the hunting laws? Yeah, in general. In general, that you wouldn't be able to fire a firearm within 500 feet of a home or 150 feet of a roadway. So we feel that this bikeway path is somewhere in the middle there. So we're just trying to okay. stop the discharge of firearm. So right now. People can hunt as long as they don't fire a firearm within 100, uh, 500 feet of a home or 150 feet of a roadway. Okay? So if you have 25 acres behind your house, as long as that person is 500 yards away from your house, he can hunt. Is there, is a greenway going through any existing established hunting areas right now? All of Millville. I can safely say it would probably be uh, a hunting area as long as it's not within 500 feet of a house or 150 feet of a roadway. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do understand. The whole town of Millville. I understand that. Okay. I do understand that the chief is asking this roadway instead of being 150 feet discharging the firearm within 150 feet of this by, uh, pathway. He's asking for 500 feet instead. He's asking for 350 more feet than what the state mandates right now. Okay. I was just wondering if it was going through any existing established state or areas in Millville that are already classified as hunting where we don't have to worry about 150 feet of a roadway. Sorry, can you answer that question? There is no law currently in effect that protects people that are walking on a greenway. Yeah. 
from what we're told from the state, they have not passed the law yet. That's why we're trying to get this bylaw enacted. So I think the best way I can answer that question is start at the top at the Millville Town Line where this where this bicycle pedestrian pathway starts. Go all the way through to the other side. Anywhere within five hundred feet they can't fire women. Okay? Okay. All right, Keith Merck here at 35 pounds away. I think I might be able to answer a little bit of her question. Uh, what the proposed bylaw would do in effect for waterfall hunting? There's no area of waterfall hunting that would have been affected by this bylaw anyway. Okay. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make an amendment to the first paragraph, the 36-1. Uh, I spoke to Chief Landry tonight about this. Uh, I'm in complete agreement with the 500 feet. Uh, I do believe that some of the wording needs to be changed. Uh, the reason why I, why I agree with the 500 feet is because of the lay of the land there. Uh, it, it lends itself to be a dangerous situation. Uh, so what I had spoken to him about and what I would like to see is no person shall fire or discharge a firearm or actively hunt, excluding out archery equipment within 500 feet of any playground or within 500 feet of the paved pedestrian pathway of the Blackstone River Corridor located in the town of Mill. Now it doesn't sound all that different, but it does make a huge difference for the chief. Oh, it does make a huge difference. It does. And do you have that written out? I do. Mr. Beckett, I'm going to call upon you to take a look at what he has written. Take a look at what is in this proposed bylaw. I'm sorry. Tell us where we stand. Sure. Legally. Was that things in the conversation you had with the yes. chief? Because I know you were yes. working with him. Because what this does, what this does, Mr. Barrett mentioned during the set, uh, one of the selections meetings, that it is 100% true that with this bylaw, somebody could walk along the side of the bed path for the fine round, hunting, as long as they don't discharge their firearm. Unfortunately, if they do dis discharge their firearm at that close of a range, they break the bylaw, but there's a good chance that the damage is already a too late, it's already gone. What this does is this allows him, if there's somebody within 500 feet of the bike path, it allows him to stop them. Where the other one didn't do that. Okay. And that's why, and he was like, when I spoke to him about it, kind of, I'm surprised that I felt that way, but it is the way I feel. I don't want somebody to get hurt in my backyard. I don't either. I, uh, I have more time back then than probably anybody else in this town. So. I'm going to ask you to pass that, what you, the amendment that you have written out there to Mr. Beckett, and I want him to review that one, plus our one that's on the, in the article, and see where we stand legally.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's my decision based upon town council's recommendation. I'm not going to allow the amendment at this time. The reason being is that it has not been reviewed by the chief of police and he is unable to be contacted at this time. This amendment can be brought in in special town meeting or any time there's a town meeting and this bylaw can be amended at that time. We want, we want the, the chief's recommendation on it. Uh, is our chief of police, Mr. Barrett, what do you think? Go ahead, sir. Say what you want to say. I was just going to mention that it's my right to ask the amendment and vote on the amendment. It's not up to the moderator to decide whether or not we can vote on my amendment. Number one. Yes, it is. I can allow the amendment or I can I cannot allow the amendment. That's under the rules of town meeting times. I presented it in the method in which it was required. I have ruled. It's not my fault that the chief is not here. I have ruled. I am doing something to prevent the town from having I, an issue. Three times. I have ruled. Understood. Thank you. We'll go back to the original article and the way that it was written. Any further discussion? There being none. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed say nay. Nay. Okay. Everybody in favor of the article, please stand up. Everybody in favor of the article, please stand up. The counters are going to come around and count.
you have the numbers? Yeah. You, you made your count? All right, everybody sat down. Everybody opposed to the article, please stand up. subsection A above. Renewable energy overlay district map 120 parcel 28 map 127 parcel 1 and bold is map 122 parcel 18 map 122 parcel 9 map 122 parcel 10 map 122 parcel 101.1 and further to amend the zoning map of Millville, Massachusetts to include parcel numbers 8, 9, 10, and 10.1 10, 10 on assessor's map 122 in the Renewable Energy Overlay District or take any other action in relation thereto. Is anybody from the planning board here? Mr. Hurtu. 
Richard Hurto, 70 Quaker Street, member of the planning board. I'd like to move and make a motion on the words of the article. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Second. Who seconded it? Name, please. Can you give a report on the public hearing that you held in, in, in accordance with this bylaw? Yes, the public hearing was held at the uh, upper uh, uh, office in the town hall. Uh, it was discussed the uh, proposed zoning bylaw, the, uh, the types of uh, allowed use for the solar collector panels. Um, we had mentioned, we had gone over the different locations that this would be approved. And uh, uh, the, mo the meeting was closed. A uh, vote was taken to support this article. Okay. But at the date of the hearing, it was last Wednesday. May 6th. May 6th. Brooke. All right, these uh, parcels of land are basically between Lincoln Street and uh, 122 in, in that portion, between the, uh, the town barn and Lincoln Street. Okay. Any other, any discussion? There being none. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. It is a vote, I so declare. Article 17, Animal Control Bylaw Amendments. To see if the town will vote to amend the town bylaws, chapter 40, animals. Deleted language appears and strike through the strikes, and new amended language appears in bold. Okay, it's very lengthy, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. Everyone has a chance to look at it. Discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Excuse me. All opposed say nay. <coughs> the ayes have it. It is a vote. I so declare. Oh, Hang on, Mrs. Wing. <laughs> I know you're trying to help me out. Get out of here as quickly as possible. All right. The motion on the floor to dissolve the warrant. John Laura seconded the motion. Any discussion? Anybody want to object to that? There being no discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Those, those that uh, oppose say nay. The ayes have it. It is a vote not so declare. This meeting is adjourned. Oh, excuse me. Hold on a minute, folks. Hold on a minute. Thank you, uh, Roland, for reminding me. Uh, Roland would like to have uh, say a few words about uh, uh, Mr. Beckett. Uh, I just want to let everyone know, I'm sure a lot of people know that we've been uh, looking for a new law firm to represent uh, the town of Millville. Uh, with great regret, Mr. Brackett um, decided that uh, he wants to spend more time with his family. He's going to be retiring, and uh, I would just like to thank him on behalf of the Board of Selectmen for the uh, seven plus years of service that he provided us, uh, keeping us getting into trouble and, um, and uh, just greatly appreciate the hard work thank you very much I'd like to I'd like to piggyback on that and uh, 
Mr. Beckett has kept me uh, well uh, versed and uh, gave me good counsel on town meeting articles, and I'd like to thank him for his service. Thank you. Oh, both.